All right, what's up, everybody? This is Tom Taylor with Seth China Morning Post, SCMP Martial Arts. Joined this afternoon by one of the brightest stars in Muay Thai and one super series, Jonathan Haggerty. Jonathan, it's a pleasure to finally be talking to you, man. Uh, how's everything going? Yeah, it's a pleasure too, mate. Um, yeah, everything's going well. Everything's going to plan. I'm excited. I really am. Right. Well, uh, you know, you've got a, a good reason to be excited. You've got a big fight coming up in a few weeks' time. You're fighting Amir Nasiri at the you know Big One Championship on Amazon Prime card. How are you feeling as this fight gets a little bit closer? How's everything going? Uh, yeah, everything's just fit into place now, you know. It was uh, a lot better than the last fight camp, so I'm happy with the progression that I've made. And um, I'm excited to put on a f uh, performance for the U.S. fans for the first time. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, uh, I'm going to show off some special moves. Nice, man, nice. Um, you mentioned the last fight. I want to get to that. Obviously, you know, things didn't go quite to plan. Um, before we get to that, Amir Nasiri, what do you think of this guy just in terms of his skills? You know, what does he do well? What does he do not well? What are your thoughts on him? Uh, Amir Nasiri, you know, I'm not taking no credit away from him. I'm thankful that he stepped in last, uh, sort of last few few weeks for this fight uh, due to my opponent pulling out. But um, I feel he's tough, he's game. But uh, how, how tough can you be against someone like me? You know, how far would that get you? Uh, I'm intrigued to see what he brings. You know, he's been talking a... Uh, quite a bit of smack so let's see if you can back it up mm -hmm. what did you think of his last fight uh you know obviously it didn't go his way but he had his moments in that one certainly what did you think of his performance uh i wasn't too impressed with either of them to be honest mm -hmm. um i felt like he did try and put the pace on uh savas he was tough but he was game like i said but uh how far can i get you against someone like me Right. You mentioned your toughness a moment ago. I mean, there's a lot of tough guys in this division. Do you feel like you're you're the toughest just in terms of grit and heart? You've got you've got everyone beat? Oh, well, yeah, I've got I've got the heart, you know. I love to fight. And um, I think I've shown throughout a few of my fights now that I'm there to uh, put on a performance. And I've got the heart. Cool, man. Um, now, you were supposed to fight in the opening round of the Grand Prix. And, and obviously, you know, that that didn't work out. How disappointed were you when that all fell, ap fell apart, you know, kind of right down at the 11th hour there? Uh, I was gutted. You know, it was, uh, yeah, it was, it was heart, it was heartbreaking. But obviously my health come first. So uh, I have to put the fight to the side and um, focus on my body being healthy again, which has mm -hmm. put me in this position now to uh, perform on Amazon Prime and put on a masterclass. Mm -hmm. Well, everyone's excited to see you do that on Amazon Prime, but just, you know, one more question about that last fight. How do you, how do you cope with something like that? Obviously, it's not something you anticipate. It's this horrible twist, this horrible turn of events. How do you get over with something like that and deal with something like that mentally? Uh, mentally, you know, I used it. I used it as an advantage to uh, train harder and um, put my body in a better position than it was the last fight. So uh, if anything, it's pushed me more. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm dedicated and uh, I'm ready to uh, put a full stop on a Aziri. Right. Well, this this fight with Amir is an alternate bout. Um, obviously not mm -hmm. quite the same as an actual Grand Prix spot, but does that feel like you know a decent consolation prize considering everything that happened? Yeah, you know, just uh, being the alternate alternate bout. Um, I'm very thankful for one championship for thinking about me and um, putting me in putting me in the chance of uh, maybe being in a tournament again. You know, who knows anything could happen. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully, you know, I don't wish anything on uh, the tournament, but Hopefully something happens, someone has to pull out, and then in our step. Right, yeah. So obviously you don't want anyone to get hurt or anything. You're in a bit mm -hmm. of a weird situation, right? But selfishly, you got to be wishing sort of that something does happen, right? Yeah, you know, it's a doggy dog world, each for their own. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Well, we'll see, won't we? We will see, yeah. All right, well, let's, uh, let's talk a bit about this Grand Prix because it's very exciting. Um, both other fights are now on the same card as you. They had Walter and, and Superlek the night before, and now they've moved it to the same card as you. Um, I guess let's start with that one. What do you think of that fight between between Walter and Superlek? Um, it's, it's a tricky one, really. You know, Walter is, is a very tricky opponent. Uh, he's small, but he brings a lot of skill and a lot of... Uh, you, you don't really know what he's going to bring. So that's what I was sort of thinking when I was scheduled to fight him. I'm not sure what he was going to bring. But... Um, on the other side, Superlek, you know what he's going to bring. He's going to bring his, his, his kicks, his power, and his experience. So uh, I'm going to go with Superlek on that one. Mm -hmm. People keep talking about Welter's size. You know, I know he is a little bit small for the division, but he also tends to win a lot of his fights. I mean, is do you think that's really that much of a factor for him? Because I've heard a few other people say that. Yeah, you know, <laughs> size is just 
there's not a thing really. You mm-hmm. can tell by ro- by by Rotang really. Um, size doesn't matter as long as you've got the heart, the power, and the grit and determination. Anything mm-hmm. can happen. And you've certainly got those qualities, right? You've proven that. I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> cool, man. Well, let's talk about the other side of the bracket. Um, we got Savas Michael fighting Rod Tang, who you, of course, know better than just about anybody. Um, what are your thoughts on that matchup? Um, Savas can do it. You know, he's got the keys to do it as long as he's focused. Like I say, it's three rounds. It's three rounds. Well, you've got to go in there and just put put your heart on the line for three rounds and, you know, you, the outcome will be good. Like, I think I beat Rotang in the first fight, three rounds, and I reckon I'll beat him again if it was just three rounds. But um, I think Savas has got a chance. Mm-hmm. Speaking of Rod Tang, I don't really know how to phrase this without sounding disrespectful. I have nothing against the guy, of course. You know, he's an incredible fighter, but he seems to have built up this sort of mystique over the last few years. Like, he's this un- unbeatable juggernaut, but of course... You know, he's lost fights before fairly recently on the, on the Thai circuit. You had that very close fight with him. Do you sort of feel like people are maybe kind of overhyping Rod Tang a bit and acting like he's a bit more, you know, special than he is? Is that possible? Um, his fights speak for himself. You know, he's got he's on a 10-win 10 10 win streak. Uh, he can't take nothing away from him. He's beat everyone they put in front of him, apart from me the first time around. Mm-hmm. I still think I won that fight. But uh, he's a beast, man. You know, he's he's lived up to his name, he's lived up to the hype. And uh, how long can he do it for? We'll just have to wait and see. That's the big question, right? Um, so mm-hmm. you've made your picks for these for these two matchups, uh, you know, on either side of the bracket. Who do you think wins the whole thing if you had to pick? I know it's a tough question, but... I'm going to go Superlick. Mm-hmm. All right. Go Superlick. Liam Harrison said that too. Why do you think him? Just like, he's got the attributes to beat Rotang. And that's who's obviously going to go to the final with him, I think. So uh, I think he's got the attributes. I really do. That'd be a pretty uh, incredible matchup, I think, just as a fan. Would you be keen to watch that one, Rod Tang and Superlick? Yeah, 100%. I'd love to fight the winner. Mm-hmm. Well, I was going to ask you that, right? I mean, obviously, the first priority is getting past Amir. But is your, you know, the perfect scenario for you, provided you don't get called into this tournament as an alternate, is the perfect outcome to, to fight the winner of the tournament, perhaps for the title or something? Um, I said it before, like I've trained for this fight, like I'm going to step in and fight Rotang, Superlek, uh, Savas. I've trained my absolute arse off, so I'm ready for either of them, you know, so let's go. Mm-hmm. And to be like abundantly clear, if one, you know, if someone did get injured or someone did get sick or a visa issue or something, if one called on you to step in on a week's notice or a few days notice against one of these guys, you're, you're into that? I'm there, man. I'm there. Yeah. Why, why is it that you're so down for that? I mean, why, why are some fighters so up for opportunities like this and others are a little more wary? Because, uh, you know, I was, I'm ready. I've trained ready. I've been ready for a long time now. So uh, after the getting pulled out of the tournament, it's made me realize, like, let's, I need to be back in that tournament. Mm-hmm. You know, it's played on my mind. So I'm ready. All right. So perfect world. If you had to fight either Rod Tang or Superlek at the end of all this, which, which guy would it be? I mean, everyone wants to see Haggy Superlek. I mean, Haggy Rotang free, mm-hmm. but I want to fight Superlek. It's just a tougher challenge, you think, or fresh challenge? Just yeah, fresh challenge, something different. Yeah. Yeah. You mentioned though, everyone does want to see that third fight with with Rod Tang. It's a bit of a strange situation, not the usual setup for a trilogy because he did win the first two, but like you said, the first one was incredibly close. The second one was fairly competitive as well. Both great fights. Do you feel like you kind of have some some unfin- unfinished business there and? You know, do you feel like you kind of want to right the wrong of that first fight in particular? I mean, on paper, he's uh, he's annihilated me, really. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I just need to redeem myself for the first fight mm-hmm. and go from there. Is the first the first fight the one that kind of really stings? Obviously, the, the second one was, was a tough loss, but the first one was so close, like you said. Is that almost worse in a way than, than the yeah, second one? Yeah, 100%. You know, the first one got me. Got me yeah. back. The second one, I just had to accept it. That he, uh, he ran through me like a steam train. <laughs> but uh, the first one was a difficult one because I put everything that I had and I felt like I won. Mm-hmm. Well, not to talk about Rod Tang all night, but w- what do you have to do in a potential third fight with that guy to make sure that, you know, the result is closer to the first fight and that, you know, not a repeat of the second? Just beat him, mate. Yeah. Seems pretty simple, I guess, him. right? Yeah. 
just kick his ass. We got a game plan. <laughs> All right. Are you thinking about these guys like ahead of time? Obviously, you're, you're focused on Amir right now, as you said. But like, are you kind of game planning for guys like Superlek and Rotang at all times, really? All times, all times. All right, man. Well, that must consume a lot of your focus. Do you think about anything <laughs> else? Like, do you watch TV or anything? <laughs> <laughs> now I'm just constantly zoned in. Now, but yeah, I, I have some downtime when I'm when I'm able to. So it's not everyday fighting. It's not yeah. everyday fighting. Cool, man. Well, I just got a couple more questions for you before I let you go. Um, I wanted yeah, to ask cool, you man. about this Liam Harrison and Nango fight. A lot of people very excited for this one for obvious reasons. Um, I guess, I mean, just what are your initial thoughts on that on that matchup? I mean, I'm excited as well. Uh, I want Liam Harrison to do it, you know, he's a hometown boy. It's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. I can see him catching Nongo with a four-ounce gloves. Anything can happen. Like I say, one shot, one kill. Mm -hmm. Um but it's going to be tough. He's got. He's going to have to dig deep. Yeah, I believe you know, in him. It will. It will be tough. You know, and that seems to be the consensus. Everyone loves Liam Harrison. He's an amazing fighter. This crazy juggernaut with power, and you know, he's really clever too. You know, he, people don't talk about that, but he's so smart in there. But mm -hmm. you know, he is getting a little bit older. Nango is one of the best fighters in the world. The odds are kind of stacked against Liam in this one. What do you think? Just as his fellow fighter, he has to do to to win this one. I feel uh, don't get into a brawl. Don't brawl with Nongo, you know. Just, I'm sure he knows what he's got to do. Just, uh, just low kick him <laughs> and left hook mm -hmm. and Seems block. He's got. I feel like he's got to block a lot against Nongo's kicks because a few of his he's got heavy kicks. Nongo. Mm -hmm. Have you have you spoken to him at all about your you know your upcoming fights? How, how closely do you guys how, how, do you keep in touch about your fights and stuff? Uh, yeah, we've been speaking on social media. Um, mm -hmm. He's out training with Superlek at the moment, and uh, he's saying Superlek looks like an absolute beast. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, just just little things really. Like how's camp going? And um, I'll see him out on the twenty seventh. So when you hear from someone like him that Superlek looks like a beast in the gym, does that kind of motivate you to fight Superlek, or, or are you like, ah, oh, shit, I might have to fight this guy soon? Nah, definitely, man. The more, the more, the more everyone bigs him up, the more I want to fight him. Just, cool, that's man. Just how it is. Cool, cool. Well, um, as you said at the top of this call, you know, this is your chance to kind of introduce yourself to some American fans. It's a big debut on Amazon Prime now. I don't know if you saw, I hope I'm not the bearer of bad news here, but they did, looks like they bumped your fight down to the undercard uh, mm. when they added this Super Leg fight. Does that bother you at all that you get moved around a little bit like that? It, it did a little bit because I've never really, not being big headed or anything, but I've never really been on, on the undercard. I've always been uh, at, at the top, but uh, as long as I can still get the bonuses, I'm mm -hmm. happy with that. That was kind of my initial reaction too. You know, Jonathan Haggerty doesn't strike me as an undercard fighter, but uh, but here we are. You know, you still get to perform on the on this big this big card on this big doubleheader weekend in Singapore. I mean, it's got to be you know pretty exciting for you, right? Sure, sure. I I um I agree with you. I'm not I'm not really an undercard fighter, but it is what it is. We take it with a pinch of salt, and uh, this motivates me to get higher. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you know, these days anything can happen, right? You know, with, with COVID and, you know, injuries and travel issues, there's a good chance you'll end up on the main card anyway, right? Yeah, hopefully uh, we, we, get, we get the Rotang shot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'd be pretty cool. Um, that'd be cool. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. I mean, what, what kind of fight are you hoping to have then with all these, with all these eyes on you? Are, you? are you looking to just do what Jonathan Haggerty always does? Or are you, you know, trying to do something a little bit special to introduce yourself to these US fans? I mean, every fight that I have... Uh, it, they just get better and better. So hopefully this one gets better than the last one. I'm not sure if you watched the last one against Mungle Patch, but of course, man, that that was a great performance, and uh, I still watch it to this day. Mm -hmm. um, if I could top that, then I'll be happy. Mm -hmm. When you're in these fights, like you have all these great fights, do you know they're good while they're happening, or are you just kind of focused on winning? Or do you catch yourself ever be like, oh, this this is a good one? I think fans are going to be uh, like this one. It depends if the fight's going easy, if um, if it's easy. But if it was hard, like the Monkle Pitch fight, I was really and truly just in there to uh, for the kill, really. So mm -hmm. I wasn't really thinking about performance until I watched it back and forth. Oh, mm -hmm. impressive. <laughs> cool, man. Well, one championship PR said I have 15 minutes with you. We're at like 14 minutes and 15 seconds. So let's wrap it up with one more question. We've talked a lot about this Amir Nasiri fight, but I haven't gotten a prediction for, from you yet. So let's let's wrap it up with that. How do you see this one going? Round two KO. Man, I love the specific predictions. So many of you guys just waffle on the predictions. Well, oh, you know, maybe third, fourth round, maybe you know. Yeah, I like yeah. the specific predictions. I man. was gonna say round one, but I keep it safe and say round two. All right, man. Well, I can't wait to watch it either way. I think it's gonna be a great fight. Any message for your fans before I let you go? 
Uh, thank you everyone for supporting me and um, yeah, just stay tuned, you know, I'm, I'm there to put on a performance for you guys. So I hope you enjoy it. <laughs>